Hi there everybody, Peter of England. It's Friday and this is a little something for the weekend as the, uh, the men's barber used to say to you uh, just before the weekend. So today we are continuing our escaping the trap. This is the fourth video on that uh, topic. And today I'm going to cover in depth some of the stuff that I referred to last time and it's under the, the heading solutions. Uh, there are some interesting things that I want to share with you, so as before, please, if you haven't, I'd suggest you get a pen and a piece of paper, and you can take relevant notes, and then you can either cross-reference, cross-check it later, or you can uh, use it to give yourself some motivation or um, indication of what was uh, in this video uh, when you're out and about doing whatever you do. Uh, so the, the main thrust of the previous videos was explaining the fact that you are in a trap. Whether uh, you're looking at it from a direction of um, a bankruptcy for the United States or a global bankruptcy uh, from Bretton Woods in 1944 with the uh, conspiratorial, conspiratorial agencies of uh, Maynard Keynes, Harry Dexter White, Roosevelt and uh, William Julian, um, all who met untimely deaths not long following um, Bretton Woods, um, or whether you're looking at it from a personal capacity, whereby um, a credit card company, a mortgage company, a bank, in fact, that's what it is in effect, a financial institution um, owned wholesale by the IMF, Bank of International Settlements, and the, the controlling banking Zionist families behind all of that, um, whether it's that that's taken you to court and they're just about to take your possessions away from you, as I say, whether it's a car, uh, your home, um, uh, factory machinery, it doesn't matter what, um, then these are the solutions that I'm putting forward now. Now, deliberately, this it, it can't all be put through in one video because most people, as I can see from the analytics, don't seem to be able to get past more than 16 minutes before their, either their concentration levels drop off or it just becomes totally uninteresting. Um, I don't know how we decide on that. But if this type of material is of interest, you must stick with us. You must stick with Removement, you must stick with Wearbank because there is a lot now that is coming to the fore previously, which I didn't feel was appropriate to give. Uh, I didn't feel entitled to give it, but now I've got a green light to give it. And if you want to know who's giving me those green lights, um, let's just say it is other entities that wish only the best for you. It's not the white hats necessarily down here on earth doing whatever they're doing. It's a, it's a consortium or a collection of beings that want this information putting out now and putting out in a way that possibly is, uh, is best for someone like me and Wearbank Removement to present it to you. But before any of this will make sense, what we've got to address is who you are. You have got to, you have got to, you have got to change your mind about yourself. You have got to realize that you are a spiritual entity in a physical body having an earthly experience. Now, what I would suggest to you, and just as I've theorized this in the previous video, um, just imagine if, for example, the people who are controlling the planet and historically the ones who uh, anointed the kings and who basically said only they could communicate with God had been given a, uh, a game plan. If they'd been given an actual instruction book, how the universe actually works, maybe being given some type of uh, ecstatic experience or a, um, a psycho-drug-induced uh, um, ability to see some of these, these aspects, and they fully realized that what had happened here is that man, in his consciousness, had truly fallen from the original kingdom of heaven and was in effect trapped somewhere. For now, it doesn't matter about what your belief system is and you don't really have to uh, understand where dimensionally you might be trapped. But let's look at it from the point of view that we're all down here together. Therefore, we're all trapped here together. It doesn't matter whether your name's Klaus Schwab. It doesn't matter whether your name's Mike Pompeo or Donald Trump, etc. You get the message. We are all down here. 
but they and their families seem to be in a much more enjoyable, more luxurious, demigod position than you are. So if we then take the hypothesis, maybe being down here in this realm of the hungry ghosts, in this hell realm, isn't as disgusting or as uncomfortable as it might be for the likes of you and your parents and your parents' parents and your great-great-grandparents and so on and so forth. And so with that in mind, though you might see this as an accursed place sometimes to be because of all the wars, the famine, the treachery, uh, the deceit, uh, the evil, um, they don't see it quite the same. And because they're comfortable in their positions, and they believe and understand the incarnational or the reincarnational cycles within families, at the same time teaching you that they don't exist and it's all a nonsense, it's a one-shot shop, and if you don't make it or you don't pass the cut, then you don't get to heaven. But if they know otherwise, the fact that we are all down here being manipulated in this hell realm, it's not a case of you will go to hell. They actually know that you're already in it. And with that in mind, they control the realm. And it's the realm of the dead. Now, there are, there's a, a, a paradox here. There's all those people walking around thinking, no, I'm very much alive. I'm alive. I'm a natural, I'm a natural man. I'm not a person. My name's John of the family Doe, and I can prove, and I believe in God. But the fact is, if you're down here in this insane world with its projections and its illusions and its inconsistency and fragility, and that you believe that you're a body, that you can get sick, age, and die, then, my friends, I'm afraid you're very much in their hell realm. And so with that in mind, that's the scenario, that's the stepping off platform for what's going to come now. Because these solutions can only work if you take on a spiritual capacity or a spiritual gravitas which allows you to believe that the realm, everything they've set up for you, everything that's happening outside of you is nothing more than an idea. Everything outside has to be an effect. Otherwise, the building would have caused you or the oranges would be the, the cause of your being. So unless everything outside you created you, then that's not the case. So your mind is at cause. Everything is an idea. Everything is a thought. Everything comes into being by that. So first of all, the one solution that we have then is solution one. Change your your mind. So change your mind about who, who you are. That's the most important thing. Just remember also, there is, no matter what you think, whether your name is General, uh, Sir General Mike Flynn, whether it is Steve Bannon, whether it's Alex Jones, whether it is um, Roger Stone, whether it's Donald Trump, there is no rule of law because the people who are controlling the agenda control the laws. You might get the idea that there is some type of law, but for example, let's look at an, a pure uh, financial aspect. In the United Kingdom, I think from over the last 30 years, could be 40 years, there's been around about 11, 11 and a half million repossessions of property. No one ever going into those courts has ever been successful with overturning the judgment that was led, lodged against them for a repossession order by arguing the toss. So if you think you can go in and get any type of satisfaction by saying it's inequitable, it's unfair, um, I didn't realize the form I was signing when I signed it or I'm, COVID did it to me. Doesn't matter what you say in that respect, you will not get any satisfaction in a court of law because you are assumed to be dead. Dead. Not a little bit dead, dead, or like a walking ghost. So we've done the change of mind. 
what we're then going to look at is the next point of how you can start to do something about it. We're bank checks. Why those are important is it's helping you to make a stance as to who you are and what you are. The moment you put one of these in your hand and go and present it to the creditor so-called, what in effect you are doing is you are tendering a payment. Everything in commerce is about honor. Everything about tendering is the fact that you are making the effort to pay. And if the bank or financial institution or the payee refuses to do anything with it, then it is they that are accountable and they are in dishonor. And if you look at uh, UCC, I think it's UCC 3, UCC 3-603, and look up the... Um, the relevancy of what's called a tender of payment, you will see that a refusal of that obligation, which is satisfied by the tender, has quite serious implications. So the Weir Bank checks in your hand, which we're going to show you as we progress down here, are not just an ordinary check. If you're coming at it from the right mindset, what you have done now is you have presented to the creditor, the bank, whoever it is, a financial asset. So in the UCC code, it's always good to don't forget that is a universal pride. Sorry, it's a, a yeah, universal. It's called the UCC, um, but it's, it's applicable planet wide. Without following the rules of the UCC, the Chinese can't import even so much as a matchstick into the United States. And from the United States to Australia or anywhere else in the world, whether it's Costa Rica or South America, generally, as opposed to Central America, Include you have to have UCC regulations controlling the commerce and the economy. So what we've got there is a financial asset. The moment that Weir Bank check hits the creditor, it's now a financial asset in his hand. Look up on UCC what financial is and what an asset is. So a definition of an asset is now formulating a position. And you need to have this attitude and knowledge before, uh, not before, but as you proceed. Because now what we've got is something called a fiduciary relationship. You've got a fiduciary relationship with the people that you've handed it to. And with that fiduciary relationship comes definite responsibilities. Because... The moment this check hits here and it is a financial asset, okay, we we have something then created called a securities intermediary. These all have repercussions and they all have responsibilities to perform once they've received something which is a financial asset. Now, the one thing that many of you haven't done or won't have known uh, how to do yet is, is to actually present that as a, a trust instrument. So on the checks, what's coming out from, from now uh, and will be on the new ones, on the back, I think it will show something called, uh, I'll write that in black, there's when you produce, present your check or where you present any check or any financial article that you, you would give to the bank, even to the extent of if you have the time or the patience or the desire, go back into the bank and now change your signature card. Because what you wanted to say is special deposit and then sign it. The difference between a special deposit and a general deposit is everything you put into the bank now normally goes into commingling. A general deposit can be thrown into to anywhere. Anything with special deposit written on it means they have to return the exact same pounds 
or money to you that you placed in. So for example, if you have serial numbers on your dollars, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or your pounds or your euros, then when you come to take the money out, they've got to give you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven back. That is the nature of it. So with that, you can control what happens to the check. And this is all about now getting control of the finances so that you can start to present yourself as a beneficiary, a beneficial owner, which is different, under the trust that you are going to re-express. Because what typically happens, and let's use this as an example, you go to the bank and you want to open a bank account or you want to take up a loan or whatever. Because the very nature of you coming into the bank to do that, what you're saying to the bank because you're going there is, unbeknownst to the bank manager, unbeknownst to his general manager, only known by the people at the very top, probably at the level of people like Jamie D uh, Diamond, is it Diamond? Um, is that you're actually coming along and saying, I'm incompetent to manage my own affairs, and therefore I need you to help me. And the bank manager, in effect, is taking these forms out and going, OK, that'll do very nicely because we can make a lot of money off your signature. Sign this form, please. Sign that form. Fine, sign, 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 sign. And you probably these days sign anything from 10 to 11 forms. And what you're doing then is giving them a general power of attorney over all the funds, the trust funds of trust funds that have got your name on them. So this is the implication on why it's so serious and why for now we are going to march through 2023 and start to get a grip of this. If you stick with me, I will show this to you, not only on YouTube videos, but also via webinars, which will go into more detail. And if it's nothing else, it's practical. This isn't about reading a book. This isn't about, you know, putting another thumb or notification bell or whatever. It's to do with practical realities. And what I am going to show you is how to foreclose on the banks, how to foreclose on the credit card companies. In fact, to foreclose on any financial institution that you had any dealings with over the past, taking it back to the age of 18 for you. So this now isn't uh, a part of the, the debt assumption service. That, that's something we've covered before, and that's a, this is a separate entity. So this is like a new chapter now. But what I'm also going to do, um, and this is because we're, we looked last time into something called um, creative descent, Uh, I and I will do I have a way by using this is the trust fund at the BIS IMF International Monetary Fund, Bank for International Settlements, um, to help you pay off any major ticket item. Obviously, I'm not going to try and do this for you if it's just for your electric bill or it's for your, for your iPhone. But for larger ticket items, what we're going to do, and we're preparing this now, is that I will personally deliver a check to you with my details on, addressing the, the, the invoice or whatever it is for you to your creditor. This then will be a clearing action through, not Bank of America, but you can give it to the Bank of America. It won't be a clearing action uh, from, through your mortgage company. It's going to be a clearing action through here. Because what we've got to start to do now is we've got to go to source. Since 1944, whether you realize it or not, and you think it's a long way, a long way off in history, since then, everything is under the control of these two organizations here, primarily. The World Bank, uh, we don't need to have to concern ourselves with that. So that is an, a, an offer, and that's going to be obviously to We're Bank members. Other individuals who want it can come in uh, individually, 
Um, but I would suggest that you join Wearbank and become party to all these goodies in the goodies bag that we're throwing out now as 2023 progresses. Because there's too many fence sitters, there's too many amber lights, there's too many people promising you jam tomorrow. With all due respect to people like Neil Keenan, Neil, you've been sitting on it for 20 years, nothing's come out. Benjamin Fulford, jam tomorrow. Uh, you know, David Icke, very nice, love him to death. But it's another book, it's entertainment, Tucker Carlson. Anyone that can get any of these videos to Tom Fitton at Judicial Watch, I would very much appreciate that because they need to start understanding why they can't get anywhere because there is no rule of law, there is no constitution. And for all of you people in the United States who are wanting to go this way, as I suggest you do, um, in some aspects of the trust law, it is as well for you to become what's called a, a non-resident, non-citizen, non-subject of the United States when you are actually presenting your trust documents into the court. Look up this. If you swear an oath of allegiance to a foreign entity in the United States, it's an automatic revocation of your citizenship. So think on that. We need to start using what is in the book to our best advantage. This is why none of your government officers, none of your congressmen, your senators, none of your FBI judicial, uh, sorry, your ju judicial um, components, whether it's a Supreme Court, whoever, they can't be prosecuted. They never will be because they are working um, outside of the Constitution. There is no constitution, as I've referred to before. It was all collapsed in 1944. It's gone. And what you're under, under now is a masquerading U.S. constitution under the 1776 Declaration, which doesn't exist. It's just a false front. It's like the shop's gone bankrupt, but they keep the dummies and they keep the nice electrical things in the window. But at the back, the warehouse is empty. Okay. So next thing, for those people out there who are in difficulties now, not tomorrow or in a week's time, or don't want to spend time learning about um, trust law uh, or how to conduct themselves because they're just about to get their houses taken off them or uh, the car, what I'd like you to do is go to the Weirbank site and download this. It's an emergency evacuation document from court action or from any litigation process that is immediately now being brought against you. And it's just four simple statements. Four simple statements that you can read out, or if you haven't got the courage to go through, you can present it to the clerk of the court or the cleric of the court, the profonotary, as they're sometimes called in the United States, and you can do, do go that way. This is just an emergency action point for you. It doesn't substitute for what's coming next, and I wouldn't advise you to do it unless you absolutely have to, because you need to have a little bit of background information, uh, a little bit about almost like, well, what do I say at the end of all this if he asks me something like, uh, you've got to sort of know what to say. However, this will get you airlifted out of the court pretty quick. You'll either have the case discharged, dismissed, adjourned, or the judge will have a meltdown and he might walk out of the court. So I would suggest go and have a look at that because what Skyhook is going to do, it's a prequel to where we're going next. And where we're going next is something called Hopefully you can read that. I think I've spelt that right. Is it Uaras or? I'm not sure. I think it's an A. So, as we've got lots of time, let's. It's 
So this is the Lazarus tax, and this is a resurrection process. In the realm of the dead, you cannot be seen in the court. Yes, they are seeing you as a face-to-face -a -face interaction, but the energy behind it, the papal bulls of the Vatican, of the Holy See, or say, as they try to say it's pronounced, predetermine you as having died at birth and then having then sequestrated or seized your estate. You are presumed dead. You are missing. You are lost at sea. And for those who uh, haven't looked at it, but I would think everybody in the world should have done, um, the Sesui Key V Act 1666. Um, there'll be a link down below. I'll do that. So there are various Sesui Key V Acts. I think there are three or four in total. But look at the one in the UK, uk.gov legislation. Um, 1666, Sesui Kiv, Section 4, basically about reclaiming the estate. So this is where you've got to go. You've got to come back from the dead, and we're going to show you how to do it. Now, it isn't contrary to what a lot of people think out there necessary to abandon the straw man. There is a possibility also that we can do what's called, we create a straw man 2.0, to talk to the judge about straw man one. Yeah, it's a little bit enigmatic, a bit mysterious, a little bit like babushka dolls, one inside the other, but they're tricky fuckers and this is how it operates. The main, as I said before, the one question that the judge needs to be told exclusively for those who are stupid enough to turn up uh, therefore, you can see the question never gets asked and never needs the answer. Has this individual proved himself to be alive? Yes or no? If they haven't proven themselves to be left uh, alive, then all games are off. The prosecutor is acting as the, um, the executor and the judge is actually representing the state. All parties in the court are silent partners working for the banks who are collecting on the back end. The IRS, HMRC, and all taxation th authorities worldwide are nothing more than collecting agencies for the banks. That's all they're there to do, to put taxes out, to collect, to collect. That's what the courts are doing, collecting, collecting. So with this Lazarus tax on, we will then describe or show the true parties to the, the action of the trust. And we have the executor, we have a trustee, and we have a beneficiary. So if you walk into the court and the first thing does, the judge says, for, for the record, could you tell me your name, please, um, and your date of birth? Once you've given that, you have accepted the running assumptions and presumptions of this co uh, what's called a po pagan Roman curia. You're in it and there, game over. In the middle here, though, the res, that's the thing of the trust, the uh, uh, trust estate that they control, is actually your life. Because you are the grantor of all the goods, all the service, all the energy that has ever been brought down. Because it's you, when you came in, your life is going to produce it all. And that's what they've taken. So they have falsely taken control via your mother giving a certificate, which becomes a financial asset. Anything, look in UCC, the definition of a certificate, a certificate for bonded warehouse goods, a certificate of birth, a certificate for uh, bills of lading with ships. Anything to do with a certificate, even if it comes from a university, has a value. It shows you did something and you are now something different. And with that certificate, then, the money generating principles take place. You've got the certificate of live birth, which is like a mirror. It's a mirror for your estate. Then you have, so that's trust number one. Trust number two is the birth certificate. 
And trust number three for all those who've applied for a social security number is here. S, S, N. This is mainly where the straw man identity gets hit because when they're taking you into the court, that's what they're going for. This is what's called a pass-through trust. This one is a trust where there's a beneficiary. Here is what's called a beneficial owner. So you've just got these three, these three areas that you have to take control of. And it's easy because all you've got to do is go back to here and take control of that. And basically what you're doing is you're turning up in court, and you can do this by letters, and I suggest we do, by what's called protective order or special appearance. You're walking into the court and going, hey, voila, judge, I'm back from the dead. You're now the administrator of, uh, administrator of the trust. Start administrating. Therefore, it's goodbye judiciary. It's goodbye tax collecting. Goodbye the debt prison. Everything changes. Now, you might say to yourself, well, I know all this. What they'll do is they'll just do what they always do. They'll just ignore it and they will just say to me, uh, well, I don't know what you're talking about. We're holding you in contempt, blah, blah, blah. But they won't do that because the moment you enter into the courtroom, the judge has got a bid bond, a payment bond, and a performance bond that he's got to get someone to take liability for. Because these bonds are attached in, in groups, usually on a 90-day basis, and filings come, whereby if there's a bond that's outstanding, uh, uh, the add-in, it can't get pushed forward to the monetization behind the screen the screens on the black screens. So what he's got to do is, unbeknownst to you, when you go in there, he's got these red lights flashing because the presumptions mean if you don't accept it, they've got to find someone to accept it. And so what we're showing you is how to portray to them, you know what you're doing, you're not going to accept the liability for it, and that if there is any damage pertaining to you, you need to know which bond is responsible because everything is underwritten. This is what these bonds are. So as I say again, I said in the previous video, when you go into the court, it's no good asking the judge, are you on oath? They will lie, they will say anything. There is no oath for them to sit on. In the United States, there's no constitution. In the UK, it still doesn't matter because everything has been ruled about uh, under admiralty law, admiralty maritime. In the United States, for example, this is proven in all the courts and even in the White House by the American flag having the gold edge around it. And lots of people have spoken about this before I know. And all the, all the uh, fact checkers out there say it's a load of nonsense, free man, sovereign conspiracy, but it isn't. They want you to believe that because have they told you about all the other stuff that we've covered here in the last four videos? No, um, they can fact check it all they want. This can't be disproven. So the Lazarus Taxon is the thing that we will be going for and we're gonna go for that in a, maybe in a group situation. Doesn't need to be one person to do it, but one person to do it successfully and then we can join everybody else on it. And I'm assuring you, if we're successful in this, as I have every confidence that we will be, just because people haven't tried it in the way that I'm suggesting, uh, just because that hasn't happened up to date doesn't mean it can't happen. So, we'll turn this over now. So what we're going on to now is Running simultaneously with this, for those who are adventurous out there, for those people who would love to think that we could get away from the proposed central bank digital currency, crypto blockchain Alice in Wonderland nonsense that prevails out there, whether it's Abraham Lincoln, whether it's John F. Kennedy, whether it's uh, um, Congressman McFadden in the 1930s protesting the use of the Federal Reserve Act incorporated, I think, in 1913, 1912, 30, in 1913, we've got to take back the currency. 
For anyone out there that would like to join, then please send me an email from the usual channels. That's either through Weir Bank or Freeman Legal. Um, and I will be happy to show you or help you join the project that's coming up very soon, and it's what's called Capture the Currency. So that's what's going to happen. Capture the currency, and I'll be happy to show you how we need to do it. Uh, and whether you're in Australia or in, or in Europe, um, Japan, doesn't matter. Uh, this technique will be applicable everywhere, and it will be fun, and we will retake, help you to retake not only the currency supply, but also your country. So, another thing, another solution, carrying on from where we were just, uh, I don't know whether I put numbers there, did I? No. Nope. Next thing I'm going to show you for all those out there, and this is the one question I've been asked so many times in the past, oh, what about income tax? What about PAYE, as they call it, as they call it in England? What about the, um, my employer deducting taxes from me? Income tax, again, 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 is voluntary. And if you signed a, a form in the United States, I think it's, I uh, can't remember what it is for, uh, is it a, a, it's not a 1040, just bear with me a minute. Uh, haven't got it in front of me. Doesn't matter. Uh, if you've signed a form um, and you are voluntarily giving taxes, you're putting yourself in the same position as someone who is an agent uh, working for the federal authorities. It's volu voluntary. Uh, what I'd like to show you is the fact that what you're being paid in is a fractional reserve note is it not, issued by the Fed or the Bank of England or the European Central Bank. And these notes are, you've got it, you're ahead of me. They are promissory notes. And what is a promissory note? Prior to 1933, a promissory note was an asset. There was lawful money around, and a promissory note was a receipt for payment. However, now it is a liability. Liability means it's an embarrassment. It's a debt. So your fractional reserve notes are promissory notes, you never go back into Walmart or Costco. You never go back into Sainsbury's or to uh, Tesco or wherever it is, what the Australian equivalents maybe or Canadian ones are. You never go back in to honor that promissory note. So it is nothing more than negative money. It is minus money. So, there are two headings why I want to cover this now, because the Federal Reserve, Fractional Reserve lending notes are not real money, they are minus money. They're a liability, and that's only based on the fact you need to say to the IRS agent or write on the form, it's a promissory note. It's, is it an asset or is it a liability? There isn't two ways to go on it. It's a liability, therefore they can't tax you on it. Leading to the next point, Why they also can't tax you, maybe you can't see that, it's not big enough. Uh, it says wages. Wages are not, not income. Wages are property. Wages are an exchange of labor for reward. Income 
is only attributable, attributable to profit from business or an appreciation in the value of some type of object or investment medium. Don't believe me? Well, for the benefit of our American uh, friends, let me, let me, oh, also, Article 23 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Article 23, uh, parts 1 to 4, all state quite categorically that everyone is entitled to earn a living free from, and if necessary, there's a requirement for the wages or the earnings to be backed up by social assistance. Now, don't forget, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was the backup document that the bankers managed to fuck the world over by getting Eleanor Roosevelt, wife of the president, to come and put together in, in Maine to herald the coming of the peace, the new version of no more war ever again. So the Universal Declaration of Human Rights foresaw that. It didn't basically say, yes, don't worry, you can earn your wages, but you can sp uh, pay 95% tax on them. So uh, I will read to you from Oliver versus Halstead, 86 SE, Rep 2D, 859 in 1955, from the presiding judge. And what the presiding judge said, compensation for labor, that is wages, cannot be regarded as profit within the meaning of the law. The word profit means the gain made upon any business or investment. A different thing altogether from mere compensation for labor, in inverted commas, wages. Title 26, United States Code 3402A says, Every employer making payment of wages shall deduct and withhold upon such wages a tax. But shall doesn't mean must. Shall doesn't mean you're obligated to. Shall just means may. Shall means should. Okay? So what they do by a specific uh, action of, of uh, wordplay um, and trickery, they get everybody to look and think, ah, well, I've got to do that. So, so yeah, withholding. So, yep, so that's basically it. The, the asset or liability, wages received. Uh, I've covered all of that. Fractional reserve notes. So that's the main thing for you to take away for people out there, um, possibly, who don't really want to get involved so much with We're Bank directly, though I wouldn't understand why that could be. Uh, but people who are, are looking for just ways of not paying tax, etc., then this is a way of showing it. So just basically get in touch with the IRS, Australian Tax Bureau, whatever they're called in Canada. I'm sorry, I don't know. Uh, in the UK, the HMRC, and basically quiz them on this, and you might get these strange answers. But don't forget, your protective backup is always going to be... We're going to show you how to do this and this, so you take back control and become the beneficial owner and the beneficiary under these various trusts. So I think I've covered everything now. Uh, I've covered about the swearing of the oath. I've covered the skyhook, Lazarus taxon. Everything is there now for those people who uh, want more than, obviously, notification, bell, make sure you've, you've done that. Um, and uh, I encourage you to go to the We're Bank site. I encourage you to look at the previous videos on these topics. Um, they are easily transportable and showable to other people. I would suggest you do that. And what we're going to do, as you can see, are lots of these amazing, everybody on YouTube uses that uh, expression these days, um, these amazing things of showing you about securities intermediary, changing to special deposit, 
We're going to look at the trust fund. We've got Skyhook, Lazarus Taxon, and we have one that I'll just put this this way up, and that is going to be I H S in viable human sovereignty. Many of you might have seen this displayed in, uh, in this manner, I think, in the Catholic Church. I think it stands for I Heos Heos Sota, um, uh, Son of God or King of the Jews. Um, but what we're going to do is to show you that you're in V viable human sovereignty is just that that they can't come along and take control of you you're going to resurrect yourself you're going to change your relationship with this idea you're no longer um, wishing to operate in the realm of darkness and death and so you shine a light on it. The truth is very simple and not complicated, I assure you. Only the lies and the deceit of these individuals keeps it all dark and hidden with complex coding and language that nobody can understand and 500 pages of this before you even know what you've, you, you've bought or sold. So we're dispelling all of that. Um, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.